Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon Sr. This is the EC Show coming to you from sunny South Florida. As always, my right hand man... Wait a minute. You're not my right hand man. No. Nope. My right hand man is actually on his anniversary. Happy anniversary to Joe. He's not going to be on this show. This is the Jewish trader, Jake Feingold, making his official debut on the EC Show. This is a full EJ production. EJ is in the background shooting us. Jordan Crate from Jordan Crate Photography is in the building. And this show is sponsored, like always, by Katie Power Greens, our Urban Farm Microgreens company that myself, David, his kids, and my kids own. Get all of your dope ass fly ass pickball merch at no strings attached pb.com and get all of the merch that you see us wearing, respect all of that stuff at enasiacolon.com. E N A S I A C O L O N.com. Fine gold! Congratulations! <laughs> You're making your debut. How do you feel? It's good to be here, man. So this is a quick story just to let you guys know. Jake is on every pot. He's on every pot. He's just never on camera. And because Joe is having his anniversary and happy anniversary to Joe and Rachel, enjoy the night. You deserve it. He's stepping in today. So, you know, how, how do you feel about it a little bit? Like, uh, First time, you know, yeah. a little, little bit nervous. Yeah. But good to be here. You got it. I'm on the show every day. You know, week, we should have so. did. We should have. EJ, we should have got a TV and a baseball bat. And then he would have been perfectly, he would have been relaxed. That would have warmed me up. He would have been relaxed. That would have been good. So for the audience that doesn't know, please inform them what that means. Because they don't know. We know it's Inside Joke. So Inside Joke is long time, long time friend, long time roommate, Jordan Miller. Uh, One time when uh, he owed me a little bit of money, took his TV, smashed it in the parking lot with a bat. Joe's got this TV that he needs to uh, break and so I'm I'm batter up. (laughs) The first batter. And, and to be quite honest with you, in all actuality, Jake has absolutely amazing form when it comes to swinging a baseball oh, yeah. bat. It looked really good. I've got the curl hop and everything. <laughs> you look really. It looks like you bat like two eighty nine. Yes, yeah, yeah, something, two, something, like, something like, like that. Somewhere in that. Yeah, look, somewhere in that circumference. I learned. I learned from Chapman. So throughout the day, Jake is constantly texting back and forth. We talk about all types of things: walks of life, sports, politics. Uh, just life in general, the way the world is, or whatever it may be. And Jake actually walked in to the show today and was like, I need to ask you a question. And I said, what's the question? And he says, half the stuff that I text you, do you understand when I'm texting you? Because you're always answering what? And I'm like, no, I'm only answering what because I need more of a clarification of what you're saying because I'm busy and occupied at the time. I, I did have to make sure because I did text your son and he sleeps through half of his day. And he understood it first first shot. No, no I was just busy at the time. So I, Bro, I, I, just, actually, I had I to make sure I had to confirm. English to that text. So <laughs> just, to, just to inform everybody, we're on this healthy shit. Myself and EJ have been going hard for the past two weeks. Lying. You had a fucking nerves. I had one. Doesn't matter. Fuck you. One, one actually, one, actually, you. Actually, I had one. That's okay. not gonna Rummy kill me. Okay. You son of a bitch. That's not gonna kill me. Let me explain it. something to you. And and Jake can fill you in because Jake has been getting he's Don't been getting away. fed. Right. I'm eating five fucking healthy meals every fucking day, nonstop. I'm fucking chickened out. I shit fucking pollo out of my ass right now. Like that's how fuck much chicken I have in my life right now. Also, when you change your diet, you're not breaking anything. It's, it's one step at a time. Jesus Christ, dude! It's like and today was leg day, and this fucking guy Rick was not fuck. Shout out to him from the Lions. Then he was not fucking around. Like yo yo yo. Funniest thing, he Jake was questioning because his gym shutting down, right? And he wanted to go to the gym me and Dad are going to. He's like, I need a sauna. And he does like. There's no sauna. I didn't even fucking think there bro, is a sauna. Bro, bro. We're exiting the gym today. I'm that like, what is that excited, bro. bro? I'm like, what's this big wooden thing that's right on my right? And I'm like, hold it. It's a sauna. It's a sauna. It's a like, fucking oh, sauna. You just need a passcode to get in. I have big, no fucking no, idea. No, all you have to do is push down. Like, Yo, was it, was it working when you... Uh, you could, it, It's like it has oh, electricity. Sure, you could, you you could, could press yeah. power. Yeah. You're definitely doing a door. Absolutely. No, no, I mean, we could go right after this, like right after the podcast. I have no, no, I have a key, so we just I, go right I, inside. I'm, I'm down. Bro. Yeah, we go right inside. Straight but up. no, no, but I mean, we're excited. We're shooting so much stuff. We're shooting so much content. Um, Joe technically shot, I apologize in advance, episode four earlier today. Normally, Joe doesn't shoot the pod on the same days because Which is random. I've kind of like, quote unquote, helped produce the pod from the background. So I'm normally there. But because of timing of the guest that's going to be on it's going to be funny as shit just to let you guys know there's a timing of the guest that's going to be on and the just just the logistics of it, it didn't make sense so he had to shoot it today he was going to come do this but his dumb ass actually forgot about his anniversary now defense to him defense they both forgot like just 
just going throughout the day, like just realizing, like the anniversary was actually yesterday, not right. today. I'm I'm gonna call him out real quick because at what time did last you today. forget? Okay. It's today. Okay. But he was like almost like at, like at what time did he forget? He uh, called me like around two o'clock in the afternoon. At ten thirty, like, I wished him a happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and, he did, and he did say thank you. So there's no way he forgot. Yo, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm got, I gotta call you out, Joe. I'm sorry. I'm telling you, dude. He was like, yo. He was like, damn, son. Like we kind of like both went through the motions and kind of like just really, really forgot. And it, I mean, it happens. Like you're so caught up in doing 9/11. things. Nine eleven. Nine eleven today. Yeah. Yeah. Matt says happy six. He goes, he goes eight, moron. But you're, you're so caught up in the minutia of the day, <laughs> no way. Yeah. you've been doing shit or whatever it may be that sometimes that shit just happens. It is what it is. Like sure. you know, honestly. Happy uh, anniversary. Happy anniversary. Well deserved. Um, yeah, I apologize in advance. Episode four will be out soon. Shooting those pods are extremely enjoyable. Watching Joe get more comfortable, get a lot, you know. I mean, his fucking dad is out of pocket. His dad is fucking out of fucking pocket. For sure. I tell Christian all the fucking time, shout out to them, Podcast Junkies. They're the guys that produce the show. And I tell them all the time, I'm like, yo, Big Rob walks in, the camera needs to be on at every fucking second. Because sure. some of the shit that comes out this guy's mouth is fucking pure TV. It could be a moment. Pure TV. Like, and mind you, Joe comes to me and he's like, yo, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of worried because, you know... To certain people that watch the show, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's just your dad being your dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter if a person sure. watches the show or if they don't watch the show. That's just Rob he's, being he's Big gonna, Rob. He's going to be the same he's way. He's going to be the For same sure. way no matter what. You For know what sure. I mean? Yeah, maybe he have a little bit of more comic courage. But it's not Big Rob's responsibility to make sure that certain individuals are not watching the program. For yeah. sure. That's somebody else's job to do. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Big Rob wants to talk about how... A transvestite blew him, or he was fucking like you know whatever it may be. It's not his responsibility to make sure that the proper audience is watching that story. There, there is a warning on the podcast. Absolutely, which is lovely recited by Bianca Budo, by the way. <laughs> Bianca, we appreciate you for reciting that. But like everything is thoughtfully thought of, you know what I mean? And and, and Joe is mindful of that stuff too. He he is, and he's kind of like, eh. and I'm like, listen, that's not your job. Your job is to create content, enjoyable content, the content that you want to create. The people that are watch are going to watch. The people that are watch stuff. are going to watch. And you'd be surprised because people will realize that it's comedic and it's funny and it's yeah. jokes. And you know what I mean? And it's family humor more than anything. Family adult humor, put it that way. For sure. That's the best way to put it. Um, that's pretty much uh, about it. About I apologize in advance. I haven't caught up on episode three yet. I have. I watched it. Yeah, I watched it because I I watch it more for critiquing purposes than anything else. I, I already seen it live, so majority of the time I'm watching it to see how did it look on camera. Was the angles right? Can we do a couple things different or whatever it may be? Because mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day, the whole idea is mm-hmm. not to shoot there. That's not oh, fucking. Yeah. That is not fucking being hidden at all. The whole idea is this is just a temporary band aid fix, and we're going to be producing this podcast <laughs> by ourselves on our own, doing our own shit. Because at the end of the day. We want to we want to hold and create everything. We want to hold all the cards. We don't want nobody to tell us we're not able to do anything at all. So that's the reality of it. But it's it's very um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's uh, very invigorating to see thoughts and visions come to light. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. in all actuality, podcast is out. It's existing. It's being put out to the universe. People are getting a chance to enjoy it, watch it, comment, leave you know likes and all types of shit. And it's good. It's really good. It's good for the. The brand, it's good for the exposure, it's good for everything that we're trying to do in our actuality. No doubt. But he's fucking hilarious. He's he's he, sure. he's no fucking joke. He's ridiculous. We gotta figure out a way to get Rob involved a little bit more too, because I mean Rob just goes there, he's so stalled out of his mind, couch, and he just chilling on the couch the whole time. And then his dad and Joe end up talking to him and it's like he doesn't wanna Does he wanna be involved? I don't know. I mean it's just not it be like laid back, maybe you, mic'd up. You gotta understand that's a that's a stoner's dream. He's looking to just chill out. Yeah, but stoners, like, like for example... You can be an interactive stoner. Right. For so, sure. for example, you didn't want to come on the pod, but you were on the pod because you're off camera. Yeah. Okay. That, he could do the same exact thing. For sure. take, may just take a couple times. Yeah, I think so. Right, warm up. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I be think so. High. I think so. Joe was better this time around, though. Joe point. was definitely better this time around. He was ready. He, he, <laughs> he, he He's starting to feel and get into the groove a little bit. I want to see what episode four looks like. I'll talk to him afterwards. Um... Not pickling tonight. We pickled last night. Apparently. 
I mean, but we played at least. We got something in. Those games don't count, bro. The wind was a key factor. You played like shit. Of course. The wind is a key factor. Fucking couldn't serve a ball in for the life of him. This kid fucking hits the ball 14 feet over the line, so it doesn't count. Bro, wind key factor. But fucking fucking, uh, Brett does the same exact thing, and that shit just fucking hits the line. Yeah, Brett yeah. Brett hits it in praise. The difference is is Brett is skin and bones. <laughs> so he's and EJ's, a, yeah. EJ's a monster. EJ's a monster. EJ's so. a monster. There's, there's more power. EJ is a EJ is a fucking really, really, really big individual. Uh so let's go. We have to talk about it. There was four NFL playoff games this past weekend. Yes. And it was the The first game was what? I don't remember the order. Baltimore versus Texans. Mm-hmm. That was a complete blowout. We all had Baltimore. Mm-hmm. The second game was the San Francisco 49ers versus the Green Bay Packers, mm-hmm. which was an excellent game. Free. Excellent game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third game was the Tampa Bay Bucks versus the Detroit Lions. Which wasn't that good of a game. No, because Baker Before just you. fucking, you know. I'll, I'll tell that story in a second. And then the last game was the... Uh, Kansas City Chiefs versus the Bills. Buffalo Bills, which ended up being a really, really good game. So really scripted. I needed Baltimore. Baltimore won. I needed uh, what was the second game again? Remind me. Oh, um, need Green Bay. Yeah, Green Bay Chiefs. got that. But then Tampa. I needed fucking. Oh, no, yes. But then I needed Tampa Bay. Detroit fucking blew them niggas out. And then fucking. And then in the last game, it helped out so much because Kansas City did their thing. They straight up inserted a magnet in that ball, bro. Listen. Everybody had the Bills. The Bills the and everybody. World. Bills and over was the only thing that I was seeing. Bills over, Bills over, Bills over. Let's go through the games. Lamar looks fucking amazing. He looks absolutely amazing. He is going to lift that Lombardi trophy, and it's going to be in Pompano. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. I'm not saying that the Ravens are going to lose, but they blew up the Texans. Like, come on. They, they play the schedule. They play this because it's all they can no, do. I understand. I still think the Niners are stronger. They beat the Niners in fucking Frisco. They did. They did. Uh, Hands, like, handily. It was at a time where San Fran's oh, was Andrew very was injury prone at that time. It was like a three-week period. I'm telling you right now, nine out of ten times, Baltimore right now will win that game against 49ers. Nine out of ten times. Lamar is just playing on a different level. Like... Like, think about it. They don't have any fucking all-star wide receivers. And these guys catch 40 yards, 50 oh, yards. Zay Flowers is an all-star wide receiver. He, he distributes the ball evenly to where it's not like you could double anybody. Yeah, so he's right. If you check like, the stat list, everyone got like 50. Yeah, everybody got like 50 yards, 50 yards, 50 yards. And, and Lamar has 96. His, and you got to watch his feet, too. Yeah, he has 96 for three touchdowns. No fucking linebacker is going to catch up to him. A fucking corner is barely going to catch up Fred to him. Fred Warner will catch up to him. A safety. Fred Warner. Maybe Probably one. Not. Probably Maybe, not. I'll give you that. Maybe one, but that's about it. You know what I'm saying? But for me, Baltimore is going to beat Kansas City for sure. I agree. And, and it sucks because Mahomes is just, he's really fucking good. He is really fucking good. He's like, never seen a non-playoff game. No. He's been, every, every, every fucking every year, year he's been in a playoff game. Then two years yeah. he's been in the Super Bowl. Yeah, different. He he's very good, but different situations are for different people. I, he I, has two Super Bowl rings, right? Two. And then he lost one, right? I, lost I, one. I still believe that Andy Reid's scheme is the best scheme in the league. That motherfucker been coaching for so long. It makes you football wonder. Football. Like, I, I honestly, I honestly think like Andy Reid talks to his family members in football terminology. Bro, guy was doing it with he, McNabb. He has to. Insane. He has to be fucking like Red Rover right thirty six seven on on two or some shit when he's in the fucking family dinner or some yeah, shit like he's that. Like, bring me the ketchup. Yeah, uh, he has to be. Yeah. But he's I mean, he's a really good coach. Don't get it twisted. I mean, they lose Eric they lose Eric B enemy. He goes to Washington and they don't skip a beat. They're still they're still really good there in the conference Wait, championship. The enemy was calling offense, right? Yeah. He was calling so offense. So what Reed calls offense now? Yeah, of course. He's his disciple, you know? Yeah. Like like anything else. And then in the other game, you got the 49ers versus Detroit Lions. I got to be honest with you. I am rooting for Detroit. Just because it's a fucking feel-good story. Like, there's nothing wrong with rooting for the underdog. Detroit hasn't won a fucking playoff game in 32 years. They win two playoff games. Dan Campbell wants to eat people's kneecaps and fucking all types of shit. Fucking, he's a... I like Dan Campbell. How do, how do you say that when you eat people? What is that called? Cannibalism. He, he wants to be a cannibal and eat people's shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with rooting for the guy that literally, you know, he just wants to work hard and everything will come. 
If you long as you do that, like that's fine. That's he, was cool. the, he was the same way with the Saints and with the Dolphins. Yeah, like he just he just he's promising guys, guys. I promise you, it's gonna come. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. And it literally it, he he puts in the work and it actually fucking comes. So I think I'm gonna end up rooting for the fucking um, the Detroit Lions. I'll never forget when I had season tickets for the Dolphins. He was at the time, I believe, strength and conditioning's coach. And the way I had first row in the end zone, and the way they warmed up, it was like all the D linemen in the back of the end zone. That boy would scream at those guys <laughs> to the point where I said to my boy one time, "Like, yo, that guy's gonna be that guy's gonna be something in the league." And now he's a head coach. Yeah, he he's a big boy. He, I mean, he looks like the type that literally back in the days would just club his wife to like make the selection on who will be his wife. Like, you know what I'm saying? For sure. I got some Fred Flintstone shirt. I'm I'm dragging her tonight. <laughs> Boom, and then just club her and drag her and bring her back to the house. But no, I mean, I'm excited to watch the playoff games. There's nothing like it. Damn, we only have technically. Three Two, games. Three games. Three games left in the season. That's how quick this shit went you by. Make picks? Huh? You want to make your picks? Oh, yeah. We can make the picks. Go ahead. Go. You got to go first. All right. We get the Ravens. What's the line? The Kansas City Chiefs. Three and and it's Baltimore minus three and a half. And I'm going to take Baltimore. Yeah, Baltimore. Where the hook? Baltimore. In, Can- in Baltimore. Baltimore. Baltimore minus three and a half. Baltimore minus three and a half. Mm-hmm. Lions at Niners. The Niners are minus seven. I'm gonna take the line. I'm gonna take the Niners to win, but the Lions are points. I'm probably like the same. Niners to win. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Detroit, and I'm gonna take Detroit with the points. So Detroit money line and Detroit. So you win. think Detroit? Detroit is gonna be in the Super Bowl. I changed my mind no. just because I think. You see what people are saying about how the first game of the season was Detroit. Dude, the Kansas Super Bowl City. odds literally haven't moved the entire season. I I don't think there's any way. San Fran doesn't make for it. you for the audience that doesn't know. Jake watches the Super Bowl line and the presidential lines like them shits is like the Bible. The pre- more so the presidential line. <laughs> Big New Hampshire primary closing <laughs> at seven tonight, bro. Big time. Yo, this guy is so <laughs> into it. He sends me so much Trump pop like Trump propaganda stuff. Like he's like so into it. My guy, my guy, my guy. And I'm just sitting and I'm just like, Jake, like, I'm trying to sleep or I'm trying to chill or whatever. I mean, to each his own. Everybody can do whatever the fuck they want. It doesn't change my opinion of the individual for whatever they choose. Like, it is what it is. I don't care. It doesn't matter. For me, in all actuality, whoever's president doesn't affect me at fucking all. It, I don't feel it. At, at the end of the day, the life I live... It doesn't affect me either, mm-hmm. and so I'm blessed for it not to affect me. However, I think at this point it affects the world. <laughs> <laughs> so Jake is it? We are the world. I'm, I'm for the people. We That's are the children. <laughs> <laughs> so Jake, Jake is being for the people. That's what you're doing more than anything else. Bro. So Jake and I conversate a little bit, and we go back and forth on certain things, being in the same circle not knowing that we were kind of like in the same circle so there's certain stories that come up or whatever about fucking gambling and this and that and blah 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 blah. and then jake ends up hearing some of these stories and he's like my god i can't believe that that was like that era like you know what i'm saying like that part of it you know what i mean but i'm third generation so it's like this is like this is normal to me like you know what i'm sure. saying like just being able to play on sports and knowing like i i, I kid you not like EJ knew at fucking like 11, almost 12, what minus seven meant. I think at that age, I probably knew the same, and I wish I didn't. (laughs) Like, EJ knew right away. Like, I was like, EJ, what does minus seven mean? He's like, the team that you're betting on has to win by eight for you to win your play. Smart guy. And he knew right away. It's just, it's in my blood. Like, my dad did it. I do it. Like, or I did it. And then fucking my father, not my father, but my grandfather did it. So it's like, it's just passed down more than anything else. You know what I'm saying? It's just... It's just terminology, you know what I mean? Like the way we got our my wife to, to, to get into football is we taught her the signs. Meaning. So like when the flag gets called, yeah. like, babe, what? She's like, what's holding? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's all sides? She's like, all sides. And then I'll be like, what's personal vow? And she'll do like personal vow. Like, yeah, no, for real. Pass interference. She'll do pass interference. Like she knows it all. The one she gets mad when it's like the ones like she's like, What the fuck was that? It's like Tripping or fucking like leaping. Yeah. It's like I don't even know that's a call. Like yeah. she has no idea. She has no clue. What what is the sign for tripping? They actually like do they do they, they go in like a trip? Yeah, they motion? do like this. What about for leaping? Uh, that one I don't know. We could look that up. I've never in a seen bit. the that one jump in the air. We could do that one. I, I think it's just like a personal foul leaping or whatever. Chop block. Maybe. True. Chop block. Yeah, do chop block. <laughs> I've yeah, seen the chop block. That's for real. That's a real thing. The chop block. 
Why did you text me Ryan Clark when you were on your way here? I didn't I didn't look it up. It's probably not appropriate for the show. What do you mean? Um here, I'll show you. Ryan Clark. Here. I took a picture. What was it though? His opinions. What do you mean his opinions? I think Josh Allen is amazing. He's still not great. He's not a winner that will always try to make him be. We'll keep making excuses for him like he's LeBron. Okay. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. Brutal, oh, opinions. brutal opinions. Okay. Guy hosts a huge podcast on the pivot. Mm-hmm. Brutal opinions. Right. Horrible sports opinions. Right. Um, I feel as if if you host a a pod that everybody watches mm-hmm. and you have and you're and you're talking about a certain subject, you got to leave some of your opinions out of it. But, but I mean, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, to an extent, I think he should be more factual in a lot of his in a lot of his shows and instead it's more opinionated. Just watched the Des Bryant pod and had to turn it off after 15 minutes. What happened? Or you're just nonstop talking about like, you know, separation of people and it's like, fuck, like you're trying to watch it for like sports content and you're talking about like you know, separation of people, which I guess essentially everything in the world comes down to that. Nowadays. Yeah, I mean, I try, I try to do my best, and it, and it's not easy, right? Because it's it's really hard. You got to kind of like let subjects breathe, but you also got to be able to know when to close the subject and pivot off to something else. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I want you guys to have the ability to come on here and freedom of speech or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. But if I think that your opinion or something that you're speaking on is going to be detrimental to the fucking show then it's then it's my fucking like it's my you know thing to fucking change it like i have sure, to for sure like i have to be like yo 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 chill 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 like we'll talk about that off camera or some shit like that like for sure. there's no real reason to agitate or aggravate the audience because then it's like okay are you really doing it for you or are you really doing it for everyone else like yeah i get you have your opinions you have your views and that's understandable but you still have an audience that you want to be able to show and showcase that too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's some things that you can say and do on camera and there's some things that you gotta be like, you know what, this is just, this is just not right. This is not the time for this place. You know what I'm saying? On the other hand, shout out Channing Crowder. Guy's phenomenal. Yeah, he's funny. He's you like that? Phenomenal. You like that comedy? He's phenomenal. He, he, likes to, he likes to do funny things with his wife. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Dude. No, but I mean, that's what he is. He's comic relief. There's nothing wrong with being the, like the, 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 the monkey with the hat on. Like, everybody knows. Like, you gotta have that, that person in the crew. Shout out to... And rest in peace, Georgie. We all knew Georgie was that way. Yeah. Georgie was literally fucking funny, funny, funny all the fucking time. Like, just bust out, start rhyming and shit, freestyling, making the funny jokes or whatever it may be. You always, every fucking crew, every fucking clique always has that one person. And not to, not to hate on Ryan Clark too much, but people more so attract to that sort of person. Ryan Clark is good when he's on with Van Pelp at night. Like, when he's, they're doing the fucking... You know, the back and forth on whether it's uh, Bad Beats or the late night with uh, Scott Van Pelt. That's when he's funny. But mm-hmm. I don't need to see him every fucking waking second or whatever it may be. Like, homie, like, I think it's overexposure. He's getting overexposed and he runs out of shit to say. So he just starts saying whatever the fuck I agree. He just fucking starts saying whatever the fuck he wants to start saying. I agree. But at the same time, there's many ESPN analysts that are overexposed or over overused. And they say... They, they keep they keep themselves on track. I look mean. look up where's the Super Bowl this year? Vegas. Oh, Vegas. Oh, it's in Vegas. At, 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 what's it? What's yeah. it called? Uh, Legion. Legion. Uh, Legion Stadium. Well, they built it. They built the Super Bowl. <sighs> that's. I mean, that's gonna be. They crazy. always want to keep it in a place where like like the weather won't affect it. No. Yeah, because I remember when they had the fucking Super Bowl here and it fucking rained. It was miserable. That was what, Colts Bears, right? Colts Bears. Yeah, it was miserable. Oh, it was pouring yeah, rain. Yeah, terrible. Like they redid the stadium. And that's why they only got. It. They well, now it. they don't that care. That was Manning's year, right? Yeah. Now they don't care because the the, the one... Yeah, it was Manning. Yeah, was Col- it? yeah, it was Manning versus uh, Rex Grossman. That's what the quarterback for the Bears at the time. Yeah, Erlacher was yeah, their yeah. big guy at that So time. the thing is, is now yeah, they don't care if, the, if it comes to Miami because the fans on one side, majority of the side, are covered. Yeah. So they don't care about that shit. They don't give a fuck. They only, if the players get wet, they're fine with that, but... But you saw something that they said they gonna start. Uh, they're like finalizing a deal. Like they hopefully can put domes on every single state. Well, some people don't want to do that. I know the Bills don't want to do that. Yeah, the Bills aren't doing that. When shit. you say covers, when you say cover, yeah, cover how? What's so a, like a there's rain that comes in, but it only comes on the field. 
The fans the don't. Fir, the first, I think it hits like the first twelve <coughs> rows, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. On the home side, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then everybody else is covered. And but on that away side, that shit's brutal. Bro. Yeah, 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 you get destroyed over there. Yeah, but I mean that's that's just it is what it is. Yeah. It was like I remember when the Super Bowl was in New York, and they were worried about the fucking weather, and it was the most fucking gorgeous fucking day you know ever in uh, in New York, and they were like, oh, this is amazing, this is, and it just panned out perfectly for the. You know, for for fucking for the NFL more than anything else, the NFL does a really really good job of making themselves seem like they are the biggest fucking sport on the planet. Marketing, um, they really do. They probably are. No, who is soccer? soccer. Oh, but soccer soccer's international. I mean, in America. Yeah, yeah. I mean, America. In America, they've got to be top, right? I mean, they call it the Super Bowl. They have lavish. Entertainment. I'd still like, argue that the World Cup's bigger than the Super Bowl. No, of course it is. It's fucking the ten basket, times the bigger. The USA than basketball it. thing just came out today. It's actually. ten. It's the ten roster. times bigger than the fucking thing. Can't but the spectacle. It's like, watch, it's like watching paint dry, bro. But what the spectacle mean? that they put on for it is fucking astronomical. You're not gonna be able to watch Who's Steph the, Curry, LeBron James, oh, Kevin Durant, rather kill on the same team. I don't want to watch that shit. No, don't want to watch any of those guys. Nobody want to watch that shit. Off something. Off city. It'll suck. We're gonna restart. Cause so here's the thing, right? So in all actuality, the the way the NFL markets their product is amazing. They do such a good job. Hats, hats off to them. But what they're leading to, and I remember, I'm saying this, and and quote me on this. What they're leading to is they're gonna start charging individuals to be able to watch the Super Bowl. Most definitely. You're gonna have to pay a fucking fee, thirty four ninety nine, thirty five ninety nine, whatever it may be. You're gonna have to pay some type of fee to watch the Super Bowl. It's uh, similar to what WWE just did. Yeah, did you just see? What they do? WWE just signed a deal today with Netflix for 2025 all Raw events, which is the Monday night event. Mm-hmm. Will now be streaming on Netflix instead of live. Where is it now? Uh, USA Network. They signed a five billion dollar deal with Netflix, and so the only way you're able to watch that now is through Netflix. And essentially, that's that's where every so they pieced off Raw, pieced off Raw. SmackDown's his own thing. They still have a one point three billion deal with uh, Fox on SmackDown. For SmackDown. Yep. So basically, they're just gonna force they're just gonna force Fox to increase their amount for SmackDown. Yep. Well, which one's bigger? Right now, SmackDown. But in past 10 years, Raw. And so that's why I got the bigger deal. Because they built it that way. It, within the next 5 or 10 years, SmackDown will be bigger. And so when the, when rights are due, they're going to get a fucking killer deal as well. So I remember watching fucking uh, wrestling when it was Saturday night wrestling. Like it was literally Saturday night live or some shit like that. It was I forgot what exactly it was called. But that's what it was called. SmackDown didn't end up coming until what? Like The Rock? The Rock is the one that made it SmackDown? Like made it popular or whatever yeah, it would be? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was the, <clears throat> Rock's, the Rock's fist, I think, is that big fist that uh, was like the... So that's why the, that's why the fucking WWE gave him the Rock trademark today? Today, yep. Well, they, no. No, they gave him the trademark because he decided to do a good deed and join the board of directors for TKO. And so his probably negotiation tactic was I wanted... So TKO, TKO is the parent company for UFC and WWE. Right. Gotcha. And he's on the board for like, they're trying to like digitalize sporting events and everything else. And they're trying to bring all his fans to, you know, certain certain shows. They're trying he's to a get fucking them. conglomerate. That's how it's big insane. that fucking guy it's is. Insane. Like he's fucking huge as shit. But the thing is, I don't see people rock his stuff though. Do you see people rock Project Rock stuff? Um, I have one friend in Tallahassee who's a big workout guy, and he's got he's got like all the rock shit. Have you ever but seen not, anybody not really. rocking it? I don't see people not wearing really. it. So who the fuck is wearing that shit? Yeah, no, it's it's probably he's probably got he's probably got his name out in certain areas besides the gear mm -hmm. where he wanted naming rights for certain purposes. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I'm not I, I don't really see the gear here and there. I got a quick question for you. But when when Ari Emanuel. Dana White and Vince McMahon decide to bring you on board for the board no, of directors. Right, right, right. They, they they see something. They see something big. What are you doing? No, I'm just looking at this thing because these photos. Because last time I said that all imported images, we have too many. Don't worry about that. Don't do that right now. Just what, pay attention. What was your question? My question is, what was your what was your biggest bad beat on gambling? Oh. Uh, 
You're talking dollars or like score? No, like the shit that happened. Oh. That you had a for sure winner and then all of a sudden it turned into a fucking L. Um, I can't remember the two teams, but I was uh, college basketball back in, in when I was in college. Um, they needed six points to go over the total. Mm-hmm. I'll look up the teams at a later point. I, I, I just have to do some research. They needed like six points to go over the total at, with like three and a half minutes left in a close game. And the shit just sat there forever um, and didn't end up going over. And I don't even think it was like by one point. It was by like multiple points. This shit I had $4,000. On Real Madrid versus Barcelona. And mm-hmm. Barcelona, I had Barcelona, I took Barcelona. And what I didn't realize is that I didn't take the game, like, overall. I took it to win in 90. Oh, uh, yeah, and so? And it was still tied after 90. Mm-hmm. So the whole time, I'm thinking I'm my good. play still stood. That sucks. And fucking, obviously, Barcelona wins. And then I look at my account, and it's fucking negative $4,400. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And I literally called my brother. I'm like, yo, I won this play. And he's like, let me check. And then he calls me back. And he's like, yo, dude, you took the game in 90 minutes. You didn't take the game for the whole thing. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. I was fucking flipping the fuck out, dude. I kid you not. I was going nuts. Back in uh, back in my degenerate days. Actually, pretty recent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I downloaded, downloaded Boom Fantasy. You ready for this one? Had two lineups. Uh, I had one lineup. Shit was preseason, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm drafting preseason players. There's not a single person you know on my team. Okay. Not a single one. They're all third stringers. But I was going off information from an article that had, you know, certain projections. And (laughs) I was was determined to win this shit, right? Well, I'm up. We had the exact same team Mm -hmm. except for our defenses. Mm -hmm. That was the only difference. Right. I'm up by about three and a half points. He's done. Mm-hmm. His, his whole lineup was done. All I had left was my defense. It was the Giants. And something happened where they fucking turned the ball over, mm-hmm. and my points went from up three to, like, down. I was down one. Mm-hmm. And essentially, this guy had no no, else. no players yeah. left. And so I saw my points swing from a winning position to a losing position just like that on a defense, on a third-string defense – the players were non-existent. No, this is no, preseason. Preseason. Pre-season. pre-season. You fucking pre-season. degenerate. Yeah. Fucking itching. Real bad. The degenerate days. Real bad. I think you need to explain to the audience the Jordan Love story. Because I don't think the audience knows why you had to apologize to Jordan Love. I don't remember myself. I do. Tell me. You had to apologize to Jordan Love because Jordan Love fucked your survivor pool. Yo, Jordan Love did fuck my survivor pool. So tell him. That fucking So tell him. <laughs> All right. I play in a very... Wait, so that really, really good asshole, because he's a really good quarterback. Yeah, he's a yeah. real good asshole. He's he's phenomenal. A phenomenal asshole. Phenomenal yeah. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I, play in a, I play in a very deep survivor pool. It's only a $100 entry. Actually, the one I was doing this year was a $300 entry. It's a lot. There, was, there were uh, close to like 30,000 people in the pool. The pool paid almost like a million dollars. Um, and I was following information... Throughout the week. Sounds from about a, right. From a certain person. Sounds about right. Um, I got down to, I think, week seven or eight, and the person decided to go with the Packers. There were two other favorites on the board. It was the Bills that week against the Patriots, and there was one other one, which were better favorites. This guy went with the Bill. Uh, this guy went with the Packers against whoever the fuck. Uh, the Bills against the and Packers. And he because, because of certain reasons. Jordan Love was fucking putting up. Eggs, left and right eggs. This was a no brainer. No brainer. Jordan Love won that week. My guy apologized the next week via an article. Ever since then, I've been calling the guy an asshole. He's he's a good asshole, but he's an asshole. He's nonstop probably the best quarterback for young for for his age um, in the league right now. And I. I I apologize last week to him. His exact wording is Jordan Love could tear his fucking Achilles. He, I wouldn't give a shit. He could. <laughs> he, he, he really could. Um, and it wasn't until the game versus Dallas Cowboys where fucking Jake decided to sit there and say, I was wrong. I'm so sorry. Most of my sports opinions are wrong. I, 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 tell, you, I tell you frequently, 
He texts me and goes, yo, create an account and just shade every fucking pic. Every play. And you fucking make it. So, so, so we, should we name you Mush? Should you be called Mush? I'm, 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 I'm worse than a Mush. Bro. <laughs> I'm bad. I'm bad, bro. I'm bad. Trust me. I'm no good. It can't be that bad. Because you, you had to start to do something. Like, you had to have some type of winning. Oh, I won. Yeah? But I lost. Yeah? I lost more than I won. Oh, wow. For sure. I got to tell a funny story. Go ahead. AJ, make sure you get this one. So I go through what I go through or whatever, and I, I I have to find a come up. I need a quick come up or whatever it may be. I'm burnt. I can't play. Nobody wants to touch me with a 10-foot pole or whatever it may be. I call a buddy of mine. I won't say no names. And he gets me something. And he goes, yeah, I got you. Don't worry about it. We'll play. We'll, we'll be able to put in plays or whatever. We put in the plays. We start playing. And then when we start playing, we start winning. So when we start winning, it's, it's an absorbent amount of money. So the guy goes... Um, I, I need to talk to you, and he's talking to my friend because obviously he doesn't know it's me. So <laughs> the guy goes, "Yo, yo, it's, uh, who is this?" And he goes, "Oh, it's my guy Yuri. You don't know him. He's you know big Russian Jewish guy." I've heard this story. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, "Yo, can I talk to Yuri?" He goes, "Sure, no problem." So we get Yuri on the phone. Yuri comes on the phone. The first thing he says to the guy when he answers, he goes, "What's the problem? You don't want to pay me my money?" Yo, I was dying, yo. <laughs> It came out many, many, many years later. I saw the kid. The kid asked me. He was like, yo, was this really you? And I was like, yeah, it was me. Yo, I had to do what I had to do oh, at the God. time. Like, for real. Like, you just had to do what I had to do. You were Yuri at the time, right? I I was, I mean, technically, yeah. Who, but who was the one that was talking to the guy on the phone? Yuri was, no. It wasn't oh, the, me talking. No, it was Yuri for real. Gotcha, talking to Yuri. Gotcha. It was really Yuri talking to him. But gotcha. we had to play it off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it is what it is, you know? You got to do what you got to do at the end of the day. People can't be mad at that for sure. Nope. So, do we have anybody on our get your shit together or our fuck it list? No, I'm good. Do we? Get your shit together, Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. What the heck did he do? Canada. Can you explain? Yeah, he's, uh, no, I can't really explain. I know my Canadians can't stand him. All them fucking Joey, Drip Toronto, Nick Lima, all them guys up there, Mick and all them guys motherfuckers. Fucking they can't woke. stand that dude. Like, they guys really can't. Woke. But he's still in power. He's still fucking prime minister. Gotta get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> Sheesh. Guys, that's going to conclude tonight's episode. Make sure you click like, subscribe on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. This show is sponsored by Katie Power Greens, the Urban Farm Microgreens Company, and myself. David, his kids, and my kids own. Get all your dope ass pickleball merch at no strings attached pb.com and make sure you get all your respect merch. New drop February 3rd. New gear coming out. It's their two year anniversary at enasiacolon.com. E N A S I A C O L O N.com. Shout out to everybody that came to the farmer's market. We appreciate all the love and the support. Uh, we'll have another one, not this Sunday, the following Sunday. And. That's it, guys. Appreciate you guys. See you next time. Good job! <laughs>